High dynamic range is a term tossed around quite often in the video world. It's on every TV display when you go to the electronics section alongside apps and phones and marketing departments touting the feature. However, HDR is not the sole reason why there is increased color on screen. The lesser known capability of wide color gamut is a capability that is often overlooked and is an important factor as to why color pops on screen. In this video, Movie University sits down with Rob Brennan at Sony Electronics to talk about why larger color palettes provided by televisions equipped with both HDR and WCG should matter to you. HDR has been around for a few years now and is a very coveted feature. HDR allows displays the ability to project darker blacks and brighter whites. This greater contrast ability allows for more accurate reproduction of picture with less gray overall. At the time of this video, there are three well-known HDR formats, HDR10, HDR10+, and Dolby Vision. So if that's what HDR is, then how does a wide color gamut help with better color accuracy? If HDR is already doing that by nature of being able to reproduce deeper blacks in brighter whites. HDR and wide color gamut always go together, but they, are, they were not designed to go together. They are completely different things. Um, wide color gamut uh, has to do with the color space that you're kind of working in. Um, you've probably heard of things like Rec. 709 or DCI or DCI P3. Uh, or 2020, these are color ranges, right? Um, when they're displayed in a two-dimensional plane, it's kind of this triangle, right? And this triangle is a subset of all of the different colors the human eye can see. And within that, that, that uh, color range, there's this defined area of color. So Rec. 709 was the standard for the longest time. That essentially was the old SDR color gamut that was used. Um, Wide color gamut should not be confused with color bit depth, which we don't need to get into, but essentially it's uh, how many different colors or, or what are the extreme edges of your red, green, and blue that you can make is your color gamut. Wide color gamut basically means if it's more than 709, which was the standard for a long time, it's wide color gamut. That could mean it's DCI-P3, which is the standard for uh, cinema in Hollywood. Pretty much everything is still produced in DCI-P3 even though now you have TVs that are starting to push past that into what we would call the Rec 2020 color space, which is even wider, um, DCI-P3 is still the, the standard for Hollywood. So that's what wide color gamut it is. It's kind of the total volume of color uh, that you can reproduce. HDR is just contrast, right? Now, contrast and color are, are interconnected in a way that you can't really separate the two because color is actually Think of it as three-dimensional. You can have the color red. When I say the color red, you're thinking of a particular color red. But that color red can exist in two different planes, right? You can change the red mixture and make the red more green or more blue, or you can also make the red brighter and darker. So that brightness and darkness adjustment is uh, based in contrast, which is HDR. And so when you add your contrast range and your color gamut, the result is color volume. So it's this three-dimensional three representation of all the various colors from uh, at the darkest from black to the brightest white. And then every color in between that you can possibly come together with is color volume. So the best displays are both a combination of high contrast, HDR, and white color dim. Um, that gives you the most realistic representation of all the colors that you, as a human person, could see. So now that you know how wide color gamut works with HDR, why don't we see more WCG logos touted alongside HDR? Rob says it has to do with how the human mind detects light. HDR has been the single most significant improvement in television. Um, and of course, not, when I mean television, it's not just the, the TV set itself, but the content that's being produced, big blockbuster, you know, high production value, um, all the trickling all the way down to, you know, kind of broadcasting. And the reason for that is essentially when you think about what makes a good picture. For many years, I've talked about what I call the three C's of picture quality, clarity, color, and contrast, right? And these are three things that you need to make a good picture, but that's not the right order. 
contrast, color, and clarity is the actual correct sequence. If you have a high contrast image and you have middling color um, compared to middling contrast and excellent color, the high contrast image will appear better to you. You will believe, you'll be drawn to that, right? For all our sophistication, human beings still like bright, shiny objects, right? We, we, we kind of are drawn, drawn to them. And so essentially the short description between what HDR or high dynamic range versus standard dynamic range is, is that it is an increase in contrast potential. The other difference is that HDR is what we call an absolute contrast system, whereas SDR is a relative system. And what that means is in SDR, there's a relationship between bright and dark, and the relationship is fixed, but you can move bright and dark around. That's a gamma correction, right? Dark can get darker, but as a byproduct, bright also gets darker or vice versa. But an absolute system with HDR means that black is defined as zero, it ha that's its value. Black can't be one, it can't be negative one, it has to be zero. It also, instead of having a very limited amount of contrast, about 100 nits, HDR goes up to potentially 10,000 nits. And the reason that number exists, it's not arbitrary, it's not just drawn from a hat. HDR represents about the amount of contrast that you as a human can see at any one time. Um, in your head, right, you've got these two eyeballs and you have irises that can um, constrict or they can open, and that will change your uh, kind of the contrast range that you can see at one time. But before it opens or closes, the amount of contrast you can see is about equal to the HDR range, zero to 10,000. So that's why it was kind of selected as a target. So when you think about it from, a, from an intention perspective, if you can have a television that can display between zero and 10,000, it'll be the most realistic looking picture you've ever seen, because that's what happens when you go outside and you look at stuff, right? That's about the contrast that you see in everyday life. And so it was selected for, for that reason. And so there's been this incredible jump forward in terms of, I'll use the word realism, but I don't mean it in the way that, you know, documentaries look really real. And, you know, I'm not here to, to, to dunk on, you know, Zack Snyder, um, but like the movie 300 doesn't look real, but it looks uh, immersive, you know, it draws you in. And so that realism or that immersion um, is uh, influenced quite heavily by HDR, much more so than color gamut, much more so than resolution, it's contrast. And that's essentially what HDR is and why it was so, you know, uh, impactful to the, to the industry.